Nowadays, renowned as the father of physics, Nikola Tesla was an unsung hero for most of history. Tesla was a visionary, a genius, and a selfless inventor. He was primarily focused on harnessing electricity in a way that could power the entire world and serve humankind for eternity. He pioneered alternating current, which revolutionized the field of electricity and became the basis of the modern electric industry. Many groundbreaking inventions are attributed to none other than the brilliant Nikola Tesla. Throughout his career, he created pumps, turbines, speed indicators, and more. Even during his declining years, he carried on his scientific research and continued his art of innovating. Unfortunately, many of his projects stalled or remained unfinished due to a lack of consistent financial support, propaganda from rivals, prejudice, and some ill-fated life events. Today's video will discuss some of Nikola Tesla's lost inventions and papers that were never released until now, Death Ray. One of the most enigmatic, controversial, and sought after of his creations was the Death Ray. Tesla's creativity never ceased to impress the masses, even when he was growing senile. His father instilled a strong aversion to war in him, and he worked tirelessly to find a technological solution to put an end to war. He believed war could be reduced to a mere spectacle of machines. At a press conference in 1931, Tesla declared that he was about to discover an entirely new energy source. When asked to describe the nature of the power, he responded, The idea first came upon me as a tremendous shock. I can only say at this time that it will come from an entirely new and unsuspected source. Once more, war loomed over Europe. On July 11th, 1934, the New York Times front page headline read, Tesla at 78 Bears New Death Beam. The report stated that the new technology would send concentrated beams of particles through the free air of such tremendous energy that they would bring down a fleet of 10,000 enemy airplanes at a distance of 250 miles. According to Tesla, the death beam would prevent war by providing each nation with an invisible shield. The concept sparked a great deal of debate and interest. When Tesla realized he needed money to create a prototype of his planned invention, he went to J.P. Morgan to seek financial aid, but he failed to persuade him. Tesla also made an effort to communicate directly with the British Prime Minister, Neville Chamberlain, but interest in Tesla's anti-war weapon eventually petered out when Chamberlain resigned, after realizing that Hitler had outwitted him in Munich. By 1937, it was clear that war would erupt in Europe. Frustrated with his efforts to generate interest and funding for his peace beam, he sent a detailed technical letter, complete with diagrams, to several allied nations, including the United States, Canada, England, France, the Soviet Union and Yugoslavia. The paper, titled New Art of Projecting Concentrated Non-Dispersive Energy Through Natural Media, provided the first technical description of a charged particle beam weapon. The unique vacuum chamber, with one end open to the atmosphere, distinguished Tesla's proposal from the usual run of fantasy death rays. To maintain high vacuum, Tesla created a one-of-a-kind vacuum seal by directing a high-velocity airstream at the tip of his gun. A large Tesla turbine would be used to perform the necessary pumping action. The Soviet Union was the most interested in Tesla's proposal, out of all the countries that received it. Tesla presented a plan to the Amtorg Trading Corporation, a rumored Soviet arms front in New York City, in 1937. Two years later, in 1939, one stage of the plan was tested in the Soviet Union, and Tesla received a $25,000 check. Tesla hoped that his creation would be exclusively defensive and serve as an anti-war tool. His system needed power plants along a nation's coast to scan the skies for enemy aircraft. The beam's effectiveness was limited to about 200 miles, the distance of the Earth's curvature, because it was projected in a straight line. Tesla also considered using his particle beam for peaceful purposes, including long-distance power transmission without wires. He also advanced the radical idea of creating artificial aurora borealis by heating a portion of the upper atmosphere. Whether Tesla's concept was ever seriously considered is still up for debate. Most experts today believe his theory to be unsustainable. However, his death beam is eerily similar to the charged particle beam weapons developed by the United States and the Soviet Union during the Cold War. However, Tesla's hope for a technological way to end a war still seems as remote today as it did when he first put forth the idea in the 1930s wireless energy. By the end of the 1890s, Tesla had concluded that it might be possible to transmit electrical power at high altitudes without using wires. There, the air was thinner and more conductive. As a result, upon learning of Tesla's research, Leonard E. Curtis, a friend and patent attorney, offered to locate a site and secure power for the study. The Colorado Springs-based El Paso Power Company 
led by Colonel John Jacob Astor, was the next ally to come forward. The inventor immediately made plans to relocate to Colorado and start construction on a new experimental station close to Pikes Peak. After receiving $30,000 from Astor, a number of assistants fully aware of Tesla's plans joined him. When Tesla arrived in Colorado Springs in May 1899, he went to survey the land. It was in the prairie some miles away. He told the media that he planned to transmit a radio signal from Pikes Peak to Paris, but he gave no further information. Tesla would sit and take measurements amidst Colorado's own spectacular electrical displays. He soon discovered that the Earth was literally alive with electrical vibrations. Tesla eventually came to believe that lightning strikes created strong waves that traveled from one side of the planet to the other. Tesla theorized that if the Earth indeed was a good conductor, he could send unrestricted, virtually lossless power to any location on the planet. But to put his theory to the test, he had to become the first man to produce electrical effects on the scale of lightning. The laboratory that protruded from the prairie floor was wired and weird. A structure with a roof that could roll back to keep it from catching fire, and an 80-foot wooden tower. A 142-foot metal mast, holding a gigantic copper ball, was positioned above it. Technicians started putting together a vast Tesla coil specifically made to send strong electrical impulses into the earth. Inside the peculiar wooden structure, each piece of apparatus was first thoroughly examined on the evening of the experiment. Then, Tesla instructed his mechanic to flip the switch open for just a split second. An intriguing blue corona developed in the space around the secondary coil as it started to sparkle and crack. Tesla was content with the result and instructed his mechanic to keep the switch closed until told otherwise. Big blue electricity arcs zigzagged up and down the central coil. Over 100-foot-long man-made lightning bolts erupted from the mast atop the station. Tesla's experiment destroyed the El Paso Electric Company's dynamo, knocking out power to the entire city. The power station manager was furious and insisted that Tesla repair and cover the cost of the damage. Tesla experimented in Colorado Springs for nine months, the outcomes of his experiments are unclear, even though he kept a daily journal that was highly detailed. Did Tesla actually transmit wireless power at Pikes Peak? That is one question that has never received a conclusive response. There are some claims that he actually sent a signal several miles away that was strong enough to light up vacuum tubes planted in the ground. However, this can be attributed to Colorado Springs' conductive ground characteristics. Tesla also tried sending extra low-frequency signals through the region between the Earth's surface and the ionosphere. Tesla estimated that this region's resonant frequency was around 8 hertz. This theory wasn't seriously considered until the 1950s when researchers were shocked to learn that this space's resonant frequency was, in fact, in the 8 hertz range. The ionosphere, an area 80 kilometers above the Earth, was the target of the third method of wireless power transmission. Again, Tesla predicted that this particular region of the atmosphere would be highly conductive, and his predictions came true. He required the technical means to deliver electrical power to such a great height. Tesla discovered a repeating signal being picked up by his transmitter one evening while working in his lab. He thought he was receiving a signal from space. Much to his own amazement, Tesla was widely mocked when he made this discovery. But it's possible that he was the first individual to observe radio waves coming from space. Tesla's work in Colorado Springs is still shrouded in profound mystery. His notes and comments do not clarify how he intended to transmit wireless power. But it is evident that he went back to New York City quite confident that he could succeed. Wardenclyffe Tower Tesla penned a sensational article for Century Magazine upon his return to New York from Colorado Springs. He described a method for using an antenna to capture the sun's energy. In this thorough futuristic vision, he proposed that electrical power might be used to influence the weather. He foresaw technological breakthroughs that would render war impossible and suggested a global wireless communications network. The concepts were nearly incomprehensible to most people, but Tesla was a man who could not be underestimated. J.P. Morgan, one of the world's most powerful men, was drawn to the article. Tesla, a frequent visitor to Morgan's home, proposed a scheme that must have sounded like science fiction back then. He suggested a world system of wireless communications to transmit telephone messages across the oceans, telecast news, music, stock market reports, personal messages, safe military communications, and even pictures to anywhere on Earth. When wireless is fully applied, the Earth will be converted into a huge brain, capable of response in every one of its parts, Tesla told Morgan. 
Morgan made Tesla a $150,000 offer to construct a power plant and transmission tower. A more reasonable amount would have been $1 million, but Tesla made do with what he had and got to work immediately. Contrary to what he claimed to his investor, Tesla's real goal was to carry out a sizable scale test of electrical power transmission without wires. This ultimately proved to be a fatal error. Tesla purchased land on the Long Island Sound Cliffs for his new development project, a location known as Wardenclyffe. The Wardenclyffe project was started in 1901, with the most challenging task being the construction of a massive tower that rose 187 feet in the air and supported a 55-ton steel sphere on top of it. A well-like shaft descended 120 feet into the ground beneath the tower. 69 pipes were drilled 300 feet to allow currents to flow through them and grab hold of the earth. It became clear that more money was desperately needed as the tower's construction slowly advanced. However, Morgan was slow to answer. Then, on December 12, 1901, word spread worldwide that Marconi had successfully signaled the letter S from Cornwall, England to Newfoundland. Unfazed by the achievement, Tesla claimed that the Italian used 17 of his patents to complete the transmission. However, Morgan started doubting Tesla. In addition to being fully functional, Marconi's system was also cost-effective. Despite Tesla's pleading, Morgan flatly refused to provide more funding. The stock market collapsed, and a doubling in material costs only worsened the circumstances. The project ultimately failed due to high prices combined with Tesla's inability to find enough willing investors. After some incredible electrical displays in 1905, Tesla and his team were forced to give up the project permanently. The media dubbed it Tesla's Million Dollar Folly. Humiliated and defeated, Tesla went into a total nervous breakdown. It is not a dream, he protested. It is a simple feat of scientific electrical engineering, only expensive, blind, faint-hearted, doubting world. Ozone generator. After Morgan refused to further extend financial assistance to Tesla for his wireless energy project, Tesla grew agitated and desperate. Tesla's credibility had been tainted by his failed venture. They needed to repair his image while also making money. It is absolutely imperative for me to put out something commercial without delay, he told Morgan. As a result, Tesla focused on another of his inventions. He patented it. The first portable ozone generator in the United States was invented by Tesla in 1896. Following Morgan's rejection, the astute scientist formed the Tesla Ozone Company and marketed his devices as a way to clean indoor air. In the late 1800s, city dwellers became increasingly concerned about the smoke evil, believed to cause illness, which was produced by burning excessive amounts of coal. Pollution, a term previously reserved by Noah Webster for unclean acts such as nocturnal emissions, came to mean the human contamination of air. During this time, Urbanites had little control over the dirty air outside their doors, but they could breathe easier indoors. As a matter of fact, Tesla's machines pumped poison into the rooms. Ozone in the upper atmosphere serves as an essential shield against the sun's ultraviolet light, but pumping it into your living room is detrimental to health. Today, the FDA classifies ozone as a toxic gas with no known therapeutic applications. Ozone generators are only approved for sterilizing water and equipment. Nonetheless, Unscrupulous merchants promote ozone as a cure-all. Tesla did not mention ozone anywhere in his autobiography, My Inventions. Remote control boat. Tesla wanted to find a unique way to show off the capabilities of his radio wireless energy transmission system. He presented the first radio-controlled vessel in the world in 1898 at an electrical exhibition in the recently completed Madison Square Garden. While everyone anticipated surprises from Tesla, few were ready for the sight of a tiny, unusual iron-hulled boat scooting across an indoor pond, created especially for the display. According to Tesla, the boat had a borrowed mind. Tesla wrote, When first shown, it created a sensation like no other invention of mine has ever produced. Many attendees weren't sure whether to laugh or run away. As was typical of his inventions, Tesla cleverly thought of a way to relax the audience and invite observers to inquire about the boat. Some people believed that Tesla was mind-controlling the miniature ship, during a time when only a small number of people were familiar with radio waves, in reality, he was operating a small boat with control levers on the side to transmit commands to the mechanism. Tesla's US patent, number 613,809, describes the first device anywhere for wireless remote control. The teleautomaton or working model was powered by an internal battery and responded to radio signals. 
Tesla didn't just apply his method to boats. He broadened its practicability to all types of vehicles and mechanisms that could be activated for any reason he imagined. One operator or several operators could guide 50 or 100 machines or vessels at once using variously tuned radio transmitters and receivers. However, the inventor was enraged when a New York Times writer suggested that Tesla could make the boat submerge and carry dynamite as a weapon of war. You do not see a wireless torpedo there. You see there is the first of a race of robots, mechanical men, which will do the laborious work of the human race. Tesla quickly corrected the reporter. Tesla's invention was the real beginning of robotics, although he's rarely given credit for it. The inventor's electrical and mechanical engineering training combined flawlessly to create this remote-controlled boat. Unfortunately, the invention was so far ahead of its time that those who saw it failed to imagine how it could benefit society. Flying machine. You should not be at all surprised if someday you see me fly from New York to Colorado Springs, the contrivance that will resemble a gas stove and weigh almost as much, commented Nikola Tesla in 1913. From Albert Einstein and his ill-fated wing to Thomas Edison and his box kite type roadable airplane, anyone with a bold idea produced a flying machine in the years following the Wright brothers' first flight. However, aviation history appears to have forgotten Nikola Tesla's 1921 design for a hybrid tilt rotor, tilt wing helicopter airplane. The United States Patent and Trademark Office granted Tesla his final patent in January 1928 for a novel method of transporting bodies through the air. He described and drew an open box type craft with tilting propellers and wings that could theoretically rise vertically and fly horizontally. However, he also proposed a design in which two propellers, coaxially or otherwise disposed, would revolve in opposite directions, powered by his turbine engine. Contrary to popular belief, this was not the inspiration for vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, but it does appear that he made a few significant first claims. Earthquake machine. Tesla patented a steam-powered mechanical oscillator that vibrates at high speeds to generate electricity in 1893. Years after patenting his invention, he told reporters that he caused the ground to shake one day while attempting to tune his mechanical oscillator to the vibration of the building housing his New York City laboratory. Throughout the test, Tesla kept increasing power and heard cracking sounds. Suddenly, he recalled, all the heavy machinery in the place was flying around. I grabbed a hammer and broke the machine. The building would have been down about our ears in another few minutes. Police and ambulances arrived on the scene to investigate the commotion, but Tesla asked his assistants to remain silent and informed the police that it had to have been an earthquake. Supersonic electric airship. Tesla had been fascinated by the idea of flight since he was a child. After Wardenclyffe's failure, he began to think more about aviation combining his electrical and mechanical engineering. Notch, in an article published in the July 1919 issue of Reconstruction magazine, Tesla discussed his work on developing a supersonic aircraft. The aircraft, as per the scientist, would travel eight miles above the Earth's surface and generate speeds that would allow passengers to travel between New York City and London in three hours. Tesla's concept called for the aircraft to be powered by electricity transmitted wirelessly from ground-based power plants, obviating the need for the aircraft to carry fuel. The power supply is virtually unlimited, as any number of power plants can be operated together, supplying energy to airships, just as trains run on tracks now supplied with electrical energy through rails, Tesla said in the article. Artificial tidal wave. The engineer and physicist believed science could be used to prevent war. The New York World reported in 1907 on another of Tesla's military innovations, in which wireless telegraphy would trigger the detonation of high explosives at sea, resulting in colossal tidal waves capable of capsizing entire enemy fleets. The artificial tidal waves would make navies as useless as the paper boats that babies float in bathtubs, according to the newspaper, and by its horrors haste in the day of universal peace, foreshadowing later claims about the development of nuclear weapons. Thought Camera Tesla believed that thoughts could be photographed. Tesla told a newspaper reporter decades later that the inspiration came while he was conducting experiments in 1893. I became convinced that a definite image formed in thought must, by reflex action, produce a corresponding image on the retina, which might possibly be read by suitable apparatus. The inventor imagined reflecting an image on an artificial retina, photographing it, and projecting it on a screen. If this can be done successfully, then the objects imagined by a person would be clearly reflected on the screen as they are thought, he said, and in this way, every thought of the individual could be read. 
our mind would then indeed be like open books, missing papers. Lastly, one of the more contentious issues surrounding Nikola Tesla is what happened to many of his technical and scientific papers after his death in 1943. He claimed to have perfected his so-called death beam just before his death at the height of World War II. It was natural for the FBI and other United States government agencies to be interested in any scientific ideas involving weaponry. Some fear that Tesla's papers would fall into the hands of the Axis or the Soviets, hurried to the Hotel New Yorker, and entered his uncle's room. Kosanovich was a rising official in Yugoslavia, who was thought to have connections to the Communist Party there. When he arrived, Tesla's body had already been taken away. He suspected someone had already gone through his uncle's belongings. Technical papers, a black notebook he knew his uncle possessed with several hundred pages marked government, were also missing. P. Foxworth, assistant director of the FBI office in New York, was assigned to investigate. The government, according to Foxworth, was vitally interested in preserving Tesla's papers. Representatives from the Office of Alien Property went to Tesla's room at the New Yorker Hotel two days after his death and seized all his belongings. To examine the Tesla papers held by the OAP, Dr. John G. Trump, an electrical engineer with the National Defense Research Committee, the Office of Scientific Research and Development, was contacted. After a three-day inquiry, Dr. Trump concluded, Tesla's thoughts and efforts during at least the past 15 years were primarily of a speculative, philosophical, and somewhat promotional character, often concerned with the production and wireless transmission of power, but did not include new sound workable principles or methods for realizing such results. Immediately following World War II, there was a resurgence of interest in beam weapons. Copies of Tesla's papers on particle beam weaponry were delivered to Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton, Ohio, to determine the viability of Tesla's concepts. An operation named Project Nick was heavily funded and placed under the command of Brigadier General Elsie Craigie. The details of the experiments were never made public, and the project was apparently abandoned. But then something strange happened. The copies of Tesla's papers vanished, and no one knows what happened to them. The last of Tesla's belongings, including his papers, were returned to Sava Kosanovich in 1952 and brought to Belgrade, Yugoslavia, where a museum was erected in his honor. Western journalists and academics found it very challenging to access the Tesla archive in Yugoslavia for many years under Tito's communist regime. Even then, they were only permitted to view a limited number of papers. This was not the case for Soviet scientists who visited in delegations during the 1950s. Concerns grew when Soviet Premier Khrushchev told the Supreme Soviet in 1960 that a new and fantastic weapon was in the hatching stage. Work on beam weapons continued in the United States as well. In 1958, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency launched a top-secret project at Lawrence Livermore Laboratory called Seesaw to develop a charged particle beam weapon. The project was forsaken after more than 10 years and $27 million. There was no knowledge of Tesla's papers among the scientists working on the project in the late 1970s. It was rumored that the Soviet Union had made a significant technological advancement According to some U.S. defense analysis, a sizable beam weapon facility was built in southern Russia, close to the Sino-Silvian border. President Ronald Reagan announced the Strategic Defense Initiative in 1983. In response to this technological surprise, which urged scientists to work on making nuclear weapons ineffective to ensure world peace. The program is generally regarded as a failure, despite 50 years of research and billions of dollars in investment. There is still no practical means of defense against a nuclear missile attack. Scientists and researchers have been looking for Tesla's lost papers for a long time, but all efforts have been futile. It's possible that if Nikola Tesla had any knowledge of how to project lethal energy beams through the atmosphere precisely, he took it with him to his grave. Under the Freedom of Information Act, the FBI eventually declassified about 250 pages of Tesla-related documents in 2016. The Bureau then issued two more reports, the most recent of which was released in March 2018. Many questions, however, have yet to be resolved despite the publication of these documents. Some of Tesla's files are still missing.